what you're going to see is a series of uh, what they call deleted scenes from The Departed. Um, a deleted scene is a, a scene, of course, that's cut out of the, the final cut of the picture before the theatrical release is, 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 is uh, finished. And um, uh, sometimes one would think uh, a deleted scene referring back to the old phrase, uh, uh, scenes that, made, that uh, wound up on the cutting room floor, um, is a, kind of a, a, negative, a negative way of looking at them. Um, Sometimes, yes, sometimes scenes are deleted because they don't work for many different reasons, whether the camera's isn't right or the actor isn't right or something happened that, that just doesn't seem to work. But often deleted scenes are actually quite good in and of themselves and uh, just don't make it into the final structure of the picture. And then when myself and my editor pulled this together, departed, these are a series of scenes you're going to see that we kind of liked that ultimately were melting away during the process and ultimately uh, slipped away completely in the final cut of the picture. Another characteristic I'd like to share with you is not all entrance wounds are synonymous with exit wounds. Take, for instance, your 22 caliber bullet. It's a small caliber bullet. When fired to the human skull, what happens is it will make its entrance hole, and then it may not have enough velocity to actually push its way through the brain. So what it will do is it will ricochet throughout the brain at an unbelievable speed, cutting the brain, causing massive damage to the brain and the spinal cord. Uh, there have been cases where the bullet has hit somebody in the head and actually tumbled down the spine, tearing their internal organs, their liver, their lungs, their heart. With this particular case, the bullet actually made a, a turn and came out the buttocks of the victim. So and sometimes you'll find an entrance wound, but you won't find an exit wound. And that's typically seen like in gangland hits. In this scene, you see Billy, played by uh, Leo DiCaprio, in training at the police academy and having a sort of altercation with the uh, drill instructor played by Bo Cleary who did a wonderful job um, but again it showed it showed we felt showed Billy's independence and and, and uh, uh, level of uh, sort of uh, intelligence in a way uh, that seemed to be a little out of place with where he was but eventually this was intercut with a uh, crack house scene where uh, Colin played by Matt Damon is uh, is on the job uh, breaking through the door of a, a crack house and arresting people and up, up and coming in his, in his field. Uh, ultimately, this also melted away in the restructuring, the beginning of the film. This is not the regular police. This is the state police. Your training will illustrate the difference. What's the difference? Rage issues and low and median IQ. You say something? Sir, I was agreeing with you about our obvious superiority to other forms of police, sir. We're not superior. We're the best. Is that understood? Sir, yes, sir. I can't hear you. Sir, yes, sir. As I was saying. This scene is a flashback of uh, young Billy Costigan, the character that Leo DiCaprio plays. And this is played by Zachary Pollock's um, a, a young boy. He's on a fishing pier with his father, played by Tom Kemp. Um, and he's a wonderful actor. And in this scene, you see Billy Costigan, his father, uh, and his father's relationship to Francis Costello as Francis sort of uh, questions uh, Billy's father. Uh, in a sense, uh, we it felt it was important enough to shoot because we wanted to show the relationship from Billy's father to Francis Costello in a realistic way, in that he lived in his neighborhood, that he respected Costello, that he could have a conversation and stand on his own with Costello, but would not join in with Costello's group and his organization in crime. Uh, and that even Costello, to a certain extent, uh, uh, respected that. And also, had, also has one of our favorite lines from Bill Monaghan, uh, uh, waking up every morning and smelling the coffin. And uh, a couple of other lines in there, like, uh, been in Rome, nicer wops, no pizza, uh, which we liked. But ultimately, this was melted away and trimmed away, chipped away somehow. And as we were sculpting the whole beginning of the picture um, and all the narrative flashback material uh, was compressed. So tell me, what's a lace curtain motherfucker like you doing in the Stadies? Still on the straight and narrow. Straight isn't narrow. Still up the airport. Yeah, what do you think? I was young Bill. I'd been away. Rome. Nice of wops. No pizza. Yeah, he's mainly up the North Shore with his mother. You see him? Oh, yeah, it's not like that. I see him. You put up with that arrangement? Easier to put up with than anything else I might have to put up with. Wake up and smell the coffin. Irish. A real Mick. Bullshit and shamrocks. 
Dad, I can't get this on right. Can you fix it? Yeah, sure. Hey, look at me. <clears throat> well, families are always rising or falling in America, am I right? In this scene, Billy, played by Leo DiCaprio, is sitting overlooking Boston at dusk and thinking about whether or not he should trailers, take up um, Captain Queen in suggestion of uh, going undercover. Um, yeah, we loved the look of the city at the time. Uh, we loved the, the, the sense of, uh, of uh, uh, conflict in uh, Billy's face and his decisive moment when he stands up and decides to go. Um, again, through the restructuring at the beginning of the picture and through our editing, we found that this moment was ultimately not necessary to show his uh, decision at that point. This scene is television a reportage of uh, Captain Ellaby taking credit, quote unquote, unquote, uh, for the capture of Jimmy Pappas, the uh, nefarious killer of the two men from Providence. Of course, Jimmy Pappas didn't do it. Uh, Jimmy Pappas is barely on screen for a second or two. He's talked about a lot. You see his name over the restaurant uh, when he's arrested. And, at, and uh, at that point, too, Matt Damon's character tells Badge Dale, uh, plays Barrigan, he says, uh, Captain Ellaby really enjoyed this, something to that effect. And so you see Captain Ellaby really enjoying this um, in this in this moment. We ultimately uh, decided that uh, um, it wasn't necessary for uh, um, uh, the whole plot of the film to show this moment uh, of Ellaby with the television reporters. <laughs> Hey, this will get Captain Allaby on the six o'clock news. No wonder you get ahead. Did you have a tip from an informant? No. It was the ongoing investigation of the homicide unit that uh, affected the apprehension of the alleged perpetrator. Now, in this scene, it picks up Allaby later with Colin in the story. Um, and basically, it's a scene in which he's asking how much progress uh, Colin is making in trying to uh, make an arrest, a final arrest on Francis Costello. Uh, but really, it's more about the philosophy um, of Ellaby and his attitude towards life, his attitude towards being a cop. Um, what you'll see now is a longer version of the original scene. This scene does remain in the movie, but it's much tighter. Um, and why, why I include in this deleted, uh, deleted scenes is because it has a wonderful speech uh, by Alec Baldwin, uh, written by William Monaghan, of course, uh, that, pre that begins the sequence, um, again, about his philosophy of life. And uh, we just enjoyed it very much in his uh, behavior in the scene itself, uh, where he tries to uh, wake himself up uh, as he speaks, is something that we really enjoyed, myself and Thelma, and, and everybody worked on the picture. So uh, here it is. So I'm not making enough progress with Costello? You know, progress is hard to define. I make progress every day. In fact, I am making progress right now. There are guys in this department make excellent progress for 20 years without ever getting anything you could definitively call a result. Ah, who gives a mother's fuck? It's like any other American industry. Nobody minds if you don't succeed, so long as you don't fuck up. Objectives get lost. Sight of? <sighs> Fair enough. So who did the two guys from Providence? Jimmy Pappas. What happened to Jimmy Pappas? Jimmy had a rough month. Uh, Jimmy had a heart attack in jail, and uh, then he got himself knifed at uh, Boston City Hospital. I believe it's been in the papers. You seem quite happy with that result. This fucking result. Yeah, but Quee Bono, who benefits? Quee gives a shit. It's got a friggin' bow on it. I think you are a cop, my son. Thank you, sir. Play golf? No. Wrong answer. In this scene, it's a short scene in which um, we shot Billy alone uh, at the shoreline overlooking Boston. Uh, and this preceded the scene directly, preceded the scene where Billy is told to go and follow the envelope, and that is to uh, follow Costello out of his apartment house uh, while Costello drives. Uh, what Billy eventually finds out to be a porno theater 
and the chase, the, the, the chase ensues in, in Chinatown after this. Um, this is literally Billy sitting there, finding a place where he could be alone, away from everybody, um, right in some, uh, in some uh, desolate spot overlooking uh, Boston. And he, uh, he's called on the phone by Queenan to uh, go and follow the envelope. Um, he says, why can't your guys do it? And Queenan says, because they're compromised. Um, and that is uh, uh, something we decided to compress later. Um, although I did like uh, the look of Boston past Billy in this scene, so we included it here. Yeah, why can't Ellaby's guys SIU? No, no, they can't. They are compromised. This scene was one of my favorite scenes, actually, in the film. Um, Delahunt has been shot. Um, he's dying. He calls Billy over. Uh, ultimately, in the film, the final part of the scene remains, in which he says, you know, I, I gave you the, uh, the wrong address, um, but you came to the right one, meaning I know that you're the rat. Um, but what happened was that, originally, when I read the script, there's this long scene that, that you'll see now, in which uh, Delahunt talks about, talks about his feelings about the boss, Costello, and, and the life he, he was, he was, he's been leading. And uh, what I liked about it was that he talks about the boss asking him, could he kill somebody for him if he knew he was the rat? And uh, I like the performance here, Mark's performance, because of the, uh, uh, the, the issue is uh, where he discusses that he thought he could, but now he knows he can't kill someone. And um, uh, does that mean that he knows Billy's the rat? And he doesn't want to see Billy killed. Why didn't he tell the guys while he was dying in the, in the, the van, getting over to the, uh, the bar that they're in? Um, all these questions came, came to mind, and, and I wondered what that was. Uh, uh, is Delahunt really a cop? It's an interesting point, too. One could look at it that way. Um, ultimately, he says, why didn't I tell anybody? Tell me why I didn't tell anybody. Um, but I like the sense of the humanity of the character by explaining that, you know, I thought I could. But now I know I can't kill someone. Maybe that's why he says to Billy, uh, you know, in a sense, I know you're the rat, but I'm not going to do anything about it. Why? And before he can answer why, he dies. And so it's a very special, uh, a very good performance, I thought, and uh, uh, beautifully written. Hey, uh, how are you doing? Hey. I called the vet. You want the good news? He's sober. The fucking vet's sober, so you're gonna be all right, okay? Bad news is the traffic's bad. What's fucking here? Traffic's bad. Yeah. So hold on, right? You're gonna be fine. Sure. Okay, right. big guy? Yeah. Take it easy, right? Sure. Yeah. So where the fuck were you? <clears throat> well, Bart told me to go home. Whatever. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but you were not fucking home. So where the fuck were you? I was at the grocery store with no signal, all right? When I got the signal, I got the call. What the fuck do you want from me? Was I there or was I not there, huh? Billy. Huh? Billy. Two days ago. Yeah. Two days ago, the boss says to me, it's been 10 years you've been with me. And you never done me wrong. And then he asked me if one of the other guys is a rat, would I take him out? Mm-hmm. Well, I told him I would, but I don't know if I would. I mean, now I know I can. I mean, I've done a lot of bad things, but I've never been a murderer. Bill. Yeah. I don't want no one to put me in a dumpster. Just don't put me in a dumpster. All right? When you're dead, it uh, makes no difference where they put you. Jesus Christ. You'd be all right. Come on. The 
departed. Huh. I'm nearly the departed. You know what I thought today? What's that? Well, then you show up today. It's a rat. <laughs> yeah? So? You've never been late in your life. And when I called you, hmm? I, I made a mistake. I, I gave you the wrong address, but... You showed up at the right one, didn't you? Tell me why I didn't tell nobody, huh? He's dead. I'm going home. This is a scene you're going to see. It's very interesting. Matt Damon had the thought that we should probably show how he gets out of these things, how he takes, how he uh, spins, as they say, uh, what occurred on uh, uh, what occurred that night in the shootout in this big warehouse or whatever the place is, um, and uh, we, we we set it up in which he's being debriefed by uh, by the police. Um, the the, the um, special unit, and um, we like his use of language here, and also like the sense of how, through the language and through his demeanor, he um, uh, he uh, uses that as a way of uh, covering up for uh, uh, his actions, which of course uh, are, you know, he's the, he's the he's the informer inside inside that inside the uh, inside the police, but the way he speaks with authority and the language he uses and the nature in which he presents himself. Um, makes himself a hero. And we thought that the sense of this was really interesting. There was something about the language and something about the nature of the way he behaves in that debriefing room that um, was um, very strong and very uh, uh, very interesting, we felt. Ultimately, that melted away towards the end of the picture, too, in our, in our recutting. The way it was, there was a lot of heavy equipment, excavators, payloaders, and he was running around. And I, I came around him. And uh, freeze, freeze, state police, show me your hands. And that's when he, he drew down on me. And I, fearing for my life, I felt like I had no alternative. So I double tapped him. Um, he went down. Uh, I approached him, uh, gun drawn, uh, cleared the weapon, and, uh, and looked down. It was at, at that point I determined he was no longer breathing. No, no, I made sure of that. Uh, he was, he was code for. <laughs> 